Come here. Come here. A little quiet. Where's your room? Yeah, hang on. I'll, I'll sit here. <laughs> Billy Jean, you're not my. <laughs> that was not good. Let's take it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Not a lot of love, not a little raining. Um, yeah. How was Clay doing? Uh, he's okay. Um, he and Steph both came in this morning to get some treatment, and uh, I haven't even spoken with Rick uh, yet today. So we're upstairs watching film and getting ready, and uh, we'll just um, we'll see how they're doing tomorrow. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to make a definitive statement on you know whether whether they'll both play or let's just call it questionable. And there's nothing implied there. It's just. Uh, you know, and they both came in today and got some work, and we'll, we'll see how they're doing tomorrow. There was a report that just came out that Clay's ankle is pretty bad. Uh, yeah. is, did you see anything that was out of the ordinary? I love when reports come out that I don't even know. So, yeah, yeah. yeah the reports are, they've got better sources than I do. <laughs> but, uh, no, it was a significant uh, sprain. He was limping uh, last night. So, as I said, we'll, uh, you know, see how he's doing tomorrow. I think what do you notice about the different tricks that James does to both score and draw fouls? Uh, he's just really good at, at uh, drawing fouls and uh, using the way the defender is guarding him uh, to create fouls. And uh, he's got a lot of tricks. He's got a lot of uh, uh, you know things in his bag that he goes to, and you, so you have to go in knowing what's coming and and. Uh, avoiding that stuff and uh, the good thing is we just had six games with Lou Williams who has a very similar game in terms of the tricks uh, you know the drawing fouls drawing contact creating angles that sort of thing uh, obviously James is a different level uh, player Lou is great but James is MVP so um, it's going to be tougher but I do think getting that experience with Lou uh, will will help us um, not to mention the fact that we've played them I don't know how many times over the last few years. Uh, three times in the last four years in the playoffs, you know, plus uh, all the other regular season games. So we we know James pretty well, and our guys know uh, know him well, and so we all know what the challenges are. How different is this Rockets defense without Ariza? Well, they've been really good, uh, especially since the All Star break. You know, they they struggled early in the season, and then uh, uh, I think. Um, you know, the second half of the season, they were much better. The, the, the defense is basically the same. You know, they're switching um, an awful lot and, and uh, trying to, you know, keep bodies in front of the, the ball handler. And, uh, you know, they've done a really, really good job. But it's just different personnel, but similar style. So yeah. I wonder with James, has your general philosophy on how to guard him been fairly consistent for a while? Or what, as he continues to evolve, does that end up having a ripple effect on him? Yeah, we're, we're watching, you know, we've watched what other teams are doing. Um, we've had good success in the last few years, relatively speaking. You know you're going to give up points and stats, but, um, you know, can you make it difficult? Can you keep them off the foul line? Um, those are the keys, you know. If he, gets, if he gets 30 points with only four free throws, you've done your job, you know. Uh, within that, are there little tweaks that we could do? Sure. You know, we, we watched Utah, we watched Milwaukee, we watched the Spurs. A lot of teams did some different things. I think you always have to be open-minded um, during a series. Uh, but with that said, we feel confident with what we've done in the past, too. So we'll get a feel for it as we go. What did you think of, along those lines, Utah, the top locking was about the most extreme you know, approach yeah. you're going to see? Yeah, I mean, Milwaukee. Issue. I think Milwaukee was the first one to introduce really? it. Yeah, okay. and I saw it mid-season. It was a national TV game, and it's like I've never seen this before in my life. But uh, the game is changing so much. You know, um, you know, Damian Lillard pulls up from 38 feet to win a series. Um, as a coach, you now have to think with certain guys. I got to guard him 38 feet from the rim, and. Uh, you know, James is one of those guys you have to stop and think, do, you know, how are we going to handle this? And uh, Steph is another one. Kevin's another one. You saw what the Clippers did to us. They kind of did what people are doing to James with that, uh, playing on the top side, only off the ball um, instead of on the ball. So defense is changing as we as the game continues to evolve and it becomes more spaced out and more three-point oriented. And we've watched that. Um, but we've also been pretty pretty consistent with our defense over the years. and. We've got to be able to trust that too. 
Um, Draymond uh, got a tech last night, and you know Kevin's technical fouls have been obviously yeah. uh, well, well documented. Are you concerned going forward, especially with how you've been officiated and how that may affect your guys going forward? Well, if we go to the finals, I think Draymond and Kevin are each on pace for about uh, 42 technical <laughs> six uh, suspensions. Yeah, so hopefully we can withstand that. Uh, I will never understand the rule that uh, everybody falls under the exact same category in terms of whether you get whether you lose in four games in the first round or you play 25 games and you go to the finals um, that it's the same uh, tech, technical foul points that lead to a suspension it's uh, seems strange um, but um, I do know that Kevin and, and Draymond have a good feel for you know when they reach that number and they, they generally are able to shut that off, shut that emotion off when they need to and, and stay on the floor. So that's going to be important. What was your view on his type of I thought, it was, I thought it was way too quick. Uh, he wasn't uh, swear. I think he said, tell me what I have to do to be better. Um, I think he was called for a foul. There was, I think he had good verticality. It's a questionable call, you know, but that happens all the time. But um, he ran, ran over to him. He said, tell me what I have to do to defend that better. And he got a T. So... I was surprised, um, and uh, we'll uh, you know we'll see we'll we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, we you know we got to understand that uh, we got to be on alert because the rules are the rules in terms of the suspensions and all that stuff. So we got to got to make sure we're uh, keeping our guys out on the floor. Would your recommendation be that the, the tech counters reset series by series? Uh, I, I don't know. I, you know I, that's a good question. Um, I, uh, series by series, or maybe every two series, but it, it just um, the way it is now doesn't make a ton of sense. I'd like to see it revisited, but um, that's coming from a guy whose team gets a lot of technical fouls so, <laughs> and, and, and plays deep in the playoffs. So I'm a little biased. Steve, you've been frustrated by that for a couple of years. I wonder, you know, behind the scenes, have you tried to talk to Adam? Have you rattled some of those? Cases? Yes. Yeah. We, in the off season, we've we've talked a little bit, but um, you know. The league does a good job of communicating with with different teams anytime, you know, with the rules committee, all that stuff. There's a, there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes, and I'm confident, you know, that uh, you know they they consider everything. But it's uh, you know, you're not going to get a lot of sympathy right. in this case. So <laughs> we'll see. Steve, we touched on the the quick turnaround last night. You think the guys are more tired, given that they just closed out the series, or are they energized because there's another one right here, and, and it is Houston. Uh, I think they're more energized that, that we're here. I think, you know, we are happy to get past the Clippers. They were fantastic. Uh, they prepared us well for this series. I'm not worried about uh, the energy because, um, you know, here we are. It's the playoffs, and no matter what we do, you know, at, at max there's six weeks left in the season. You know, minimum there's a couple weeks. So we're, we're near the finish line. So our guys are going to have plenty of motivation, plenty of energy. I'm more worried about the, uh, the nagging injuries uh, right now uh, from last night. So we'll we'll see what uh, what happens. The uh, Rockets. Uh, how, how did Draymond get out of this series with the Rose? <laughs> yeah, he's very poor. He's so cordial. <laughs> yeah. Good chemistry. Right? Yeah, nice. Uh, how did Draymond get out of the series with his roast? Uh Good. I mean, yeah. he played his best game last night. Yeah. Yeah. He's Draymond's good. Oh. The Rockets have made no secret that you were the team that they want to face. Have, have you had a team uh, just been so outwardly uh, talking about how they want to face you since you've you know, been in the league? Just I don't know, I, I, but I think it's the history of the league. You know, um, our team was kind of unique. We, we, you know, we, when we won in '15, um, it was it was all brand new, and we didn't have to knock off the incumbent. You know, it was. The league was more wide open. There had been a lot of change. You know, LeBron left Miami. Um, there's a lot going on in the league, so we didn't go through that process. But the history of the league is, you know, teams climb, they lose um, to a championship team, and then they give it another shot and another shot. And you know, I'm an old man, so Pistons, Boston, Lakers, Bulls, you know, that whole process in the uh, 80s, 90s, 
um, that's what that was all about. Teams trying to knock off the, you know, the one that, that that's been beating them for the last couple of years. So, this is more the norm uh, than anything. And I admire what Houston has done um, over the last couple of years, building their roster, building their style, competing with us. Um, obviously, last year's season was uh, or series was epic, uh, great competition. So I've got great great respect for what they've done, and, and uh, you know they they're relentless. They're they're keep they're they're, they're continuing to come at us. So we gotta we gotta be ready. Do you like one another when your name is in another team's mouths from like the top on down? From GMs too. It's just it's uh, it's flattering. It's flat. You know, <laughs> it's very flattering when you win when you win and, and you win a title and teams want to beat you. I don't think there's any better place to be in the NBA. So we're uh, we're flattered by it, but it's uh, you know it's it's not easy. It's not easy. Did you have any thoughts on uh, like along those same lines? They wanted to come out early travel wise, just in case uh, they didn't want to get caught in between and not be rested right. and not adjust. That to me somewhat reflects the seriousness with which they take this matchup. Pretty unorthodox to go that Yeah, way. Um, probably unor unorthodox to start a series at 12:30 the day after. Um, I would have done the same thing if I were Houston. I think I think every team would have. I, you know, I I've, I felt weird about it because you know our guys had already sort of been guilty about mentioning Houston before the Clippers series ended. And then, you know, they announced that Houston's already, I'm thinking, what, you know, how, Clippers have two different teams that are uh, insulting. insulting them. And I, I, so I, didn't, I didn't feel comfortable with it, um, but um, what are you going to do? You know, two-hour time change, 12.30 game, I think it makes perfect sense. So uh, I think it was the wise thing to do. Would have been really interesting if they had had to fly back to Houston mm -hmm. and play game one, but uh, that would have meant we would be done. So it wouldn't have been that interesting. <laughs> Anybody else? Steve, to your uh, point about the rotation, how everything's always flexible with mm -hmm. matchups and all that, to what extent do you see that playing into this series? Uh, it, just it, what you've seen. it will play into every series. Yeah. You know, the regular season is about uh, keeping your guys fresh, establishing roles. Um, you know, you want to you want to win every game, but not at the expense of uh, the bigger picture. So. The bigger picture is the regular season, where you're um, you're you're sort of staying with things even through adversity. Um, you just stay the course. The playoffs, um, you do whatever is necessary to win each game, and that's why you see so many adjustments by every team around the league. So everything is on the table uh, for us, for Houston, for everybody else. You you do whatever you have to do to win the game, and um, there's a lot um, you know a lot that goes into that. Um, you know, last night, for example, um, you know, we start Sean Livingston. Well, it's not just that we wanted to start small. It's based on matchups and who's coming in at what point of the game. And do you match up with them? Do we want to have them match up with us? Um, it's just the, the chess game that goes on, you know, between games. And, and then you have to guess, you know, what the other guys are going to do when you do that. So it's fun. That's what makes it fun and enjoyable. And um, but it can also uh, you know, give your team a little, a little boost, and uh, so it's uh, it's a fun part of the year. You know how uh, Mike Brown has those rotation spreadsheets. So when when Steph and Clay are kind of you know questionable, does he have to come up with different iterations? Yes, of those? yes, tons he's, and tons of iterations. Yeah, he's going to wow. be a busy man. <laughs> uh, no, it, it's uh, we we you know we'll, we've already gone over some of that. You know if. Uh, Certain guys don't play. What we would do, and you adapt and you adjust, and you just, you know, you go ahead and see what happens. All right, everybody. Got it. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. I forgot to say, old AF.